uh, we're going to talk about battling some cigar misinformation. I want to start this by pulling the room. I want to ask everybody who's in here, when you first got into cigars, what are some things that people told you that turned out not to be true? And I'm going to ask people in the comments, drop this down below as well. Put it in the comments. What are things that you heard when you first got into cigars about how to do this, how to enjoy it, how to select a cigar that as you went on turned out to be just totally bunk, did, either didn't apply to you or don't apply at all? I'll leave it to the room here. What do you guys say? Can I take two to start it off with? Please. As long as it's not one of mine. Okay. <laughs> so my two are you can never relight a cigar again. Once you, you can light it once and then you're never allowed to relight it. And if it goes out, you're done with that cigar. No relights whatsoever. Actually, unbelievably easy to do. Right. And does not affect because if you relight it, it would affect the taste and you can never do it again. Same with like the uh, like a Bic lighter because it puts a weird taste into the cigar. Not true. Number two is if your cigar is burning unevenly, you have to, like, if it's put the unburnt Damn side Damn it, that up. was mine. That was mine. <laughs> Dang it. Screw you guys. <laughs> so so explain this for people who have never heard this, because this is the most ridiculous crap. I feel like everybody has heard this. I think, because I'm willing to bet is, you a lot of people watching this have not heard this. If you have this. not heard this, put it in the comment. But, okay, so this part of my cigar is burning lower than a this canoe. part. It's canoeing. It's, it's canoeing. I've got a light canoe. So you would put the side that's not burning up because heat travels higher and will even, even that out. out that burn. Because but again, you're never allowed to retouch the cigar with any amount of heat. So you have to figure out how to get that burned. Right. And that, and by the way, another piece of misinformation that you can't retouch the cigar with heat, which is not true. I'll literally sit at my desk and just take a torch and even out the burn on my cigars, because here is something that's absolutely true about cigars. A bad burn will destroy the flavor profile. Mm -hmm. If you're smoking on a cigar and you're, you know, watching some cigars, daily videos or something like that, and you notice that like you just take a draw and it tastes skanky or wrong or just not as good. And you'll look at it often. It will be because the burn is like sideways or it's canoeing or it's some got some issue taking the torch and just touching up that burn will bring the whole flavor profile back. But what Billy's talking about is this idea that if it's burning down one side, you take that poorly burning side and you leave it down. So the heat, like he said, travels up and it evens the burn, which doesn't happen. And I don't know how that even gets like, like continues to get spread because it doesn't work. Like it doesn't change the burn at all. The thing that causes a cigar to canoe on the side is typically bad rolling, Humidity can play into that as well, but that's another thing that is just totally bunk. We're going to go ahead and label that cigar misinformation. 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 Okay. What about you, Terrence? Ooh. Um, uh, the way you cut your cigars. Cut it however you want. It's all about how you enjoy your cigars. I've heard somebody in a lounge say, hey, only V cut because you get more flavors out of, out of the cigar. Oh, or only straight cut, but that that's the traditional way. And that's how it's meant. That's how most people in the fields cut their cigars. Yes. I only punch because this at the cut your cigar how you want to, because there is no way the way you cut your cigar is going to get you different flavors. So this one will lose us some subscribers. There's this <laughs> ridiculous idea that if you cut your cigars with a V cutter, OK, that you're essentially cutting a V shape. And that V shape, because there's two angle, two sides that are angled in toward each other, if you were to take that and lay it out flat, you're getting a wider drawing space than you would normally get with just a straight cut or a punch. And that is the dumbest thing in the entire world. The, the amount of draw difference you get from a V cut versus a straight cut is going to be like negligible. Now, a couple of true things about the different types of cuts. I'll point these out. A punch cut is going to bring this, the final third strength on faster than a straight cut yeah so if you're just punching the cigar you'll notice that that strength ratchets up near the end quicker than it would if you did a full straight cut because you're drawing you legitimately drawing through a smaller area there and cutting with a v cut can carry the benefit of if there's like a knot in the cigar that would that would you know give you a bad draw and it's really right up by the cap a nice deep v cut like calibri's deep v cutter can cut past that but again mm -hmm. of all the cigars you're going to get with bad draws maybe one out of 10 or one out of 20 or something like that a v cut's going to fix it so what terrence is saying is legitimately the truth cut the cigar how you want to what type of cut is on the end of your cigar really the biggest difference is mouth feel it's the way that it feels inside of your mouth mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll just there's a bunch of guys going mm -hmm, about mm -hmm. the way it feels in their mouth 
What's that, Billy? All right. First off, I was wrong. A lot of people have not heard about this. So See? Okay, sorry. put the comments up because I was yeah. certain that they had not. There's too many to put them all up. <laughs> <laughs> Look at you being wrong again, Bill. Oh, all right. Billy. And next part is we've got a lot of good ones, so we're going to have to do quick hits on Let's a lot Let's get some these. quick hits. I'm going to try to debunk them if I can. All right, the first one from Justin Byers, Cuban cigars or bus, that's BS. Yeah, there's this idea out there that the only appropriate type of cigar is Cuban cigars, which you can quickly dispel if you learn that all of all of today's cigar makers in Honduras, Nicaragua, the Dominican Republic, and, and you know, Puerto Rico or Costa Rica or wherever they're making cigars Brazil, now. Brazil, you know. Brazil. These guys, a lot of them came from Cuba. They brought the knowledge and even the seeds to do this stuff. And the cigar smoking outside of the United States where you can get Cubans, what they want is what we have here. No, Cuban cigars are bust. That's cigar misinformation. The next one. This one, you know, I have to disagree with them. Okay. Jade Hughes says, I was told that Tim from Cigars Daily sucked. <laughs> Not true. <laughs> I think that's Dustin what sometimes under the, under the desk. <laughs> What's that? I think that might be Dustin under the desk. <laughs> oh, man. He's got to get those bonuses, you know? Uh, yeah, I also heard that. I appreciate you saying that, that I don't suck. Grevlin says, the 70-70 rule. I like 65 to 66 percent humidity yeah they, so sometimes you get these things that are like generally speaking like good guidances like the 70 70 rule it's kind of the general speaking rule what happens is when people take it as gospel and they're like oh you keep your cigars at 65 percent, or you do the ridiculous thing that i mentioned the other week on the show i keep my cigars at my at home in my personal humidor at between 55 and 60 percent humidity and I really enjoy them. The most important thing about your cigars is that you enjoy them. So what percentage humidity you keep them at, that's all that freaking matters. And if somebody busts you about the 70-70 rule, it's a great sign that they really don't know what they're talking about. All right, next one. This one's from Jack Dennis. What's happening, Jack? He says, the darker the cigar, the stronger it is. Has anyone else heard that? Oh, yeah. Tons. That's tons. I put that in like top three. Yeah. So there... and. I talk about this with people with consumers in a humidor a lot. If people come in and ask me about that, I tell them that generally speaking, that's true. The, the darker the wrapper leaf, the stronger a cigar is in a very overarching generalistic sense. If I laid out 10 cigars from a very light Connecticut shade to a very dark Connecticut broadleaf and everywhere in between, in a general sense, the strength would go up as you went toward the darker cigar. But that's not always true. There are a lot of really dark wrappered cigars that are more medium in strength. And there are some mild Connecticut's that are mm -hmm. really strong and very peppery. I'm thinking about uh, Padron's Damaso is a Connecticut shade cigar that really packs a hell of a punch and some really nice spice to it. There's other cigars that are out there like that, but it's not always true like that. What's most important, if you're looking for a recommendation on like, what's the next big thing that I want to try out there? It's going to be something in a wrap relief similar to what you enjoy the most. So mm -hmm. you're working your way through cigars. Don't worry about how light or dark the wrap relief is. If you smoke a Sumatra cigar and you're like, ooh, I really enjoyed that, look for some other Sumatras. The strength will go up and down with Sumatra. It's a very versatile leaf. Mm -hmm. You can make really strong cigars and really mild cigars with it, but they'll all be in that Sumatra wheelhouse. It's one of the beautiful things about leaves like that. But yeah, the, the darker it is, the stronger it is. That is cigar misinformation. Like, especially right now. So I smoked the Ramon Ionis at the first half of the show, and it was a very full body cigar, medium strength or medium strength, and but it was a really full body, full body plus. But now I'm having a Puro Especial from AJ, and it is darker than me oh it happened no while the camera was there <laughs> it happened while camera. it was on camera yes by the way uh i just want to make a quick statement if i can i don't mean to interrupt you uh alien tape is garbage agreed <laughs> <laughs> thank you all right what were you saying but uh yeah the the puto especial from aj darker than the ramonionis and it is very medium just yeah. middle of the line like i can say this is one of the like most medium cigars in his lineup and it's perfect. Like I, I love, I love this cigar, but it does not pack as much of a punch as the lighter Ramon Ionis. Okay, cigar misinformation. What's the next one, Billy? I feel like we needed the stamp after that. I know. I should have had a misinformation. Graphic to put up. <laughs> next one. This one's from John Floor. Hey, John hey. and Julie are there. Your wife will hate cigars, and she will never smoke with you. Misinformation. Misinformation. Where's Allison at? Because she loves smoking cigars. The way to say this one, because this is not true. 
your wife will most likely hate cigars and, and not <laughs> want to smoke one with you. It's actually, I am amazed being in the cigar world. There's some things that I, that I never really expected. The number of women that smoke cigars surprises me. They're like, there's this huge and growing community of women cigar smokers and a bunch of people who like smoking cigars is what these people do together as a couple. You know, John and his wife, Julie Floor, they watch the show together every week and they smoke cigars as sort of like their date night. They can diffuse. They have important time where they can talk through life and what's going on together. Where like, that's one of the most important things to a great marriage is having that sort of, you know, what does Jordan Peterson say? You sort of need 90 minutes a week to just talk about life and what's going on. A cigar is like a, like you go get yourself a good Toro and then you'll have that 90 minutes to sit down together. And there's a lot of dudes whose wives smoke with them, which is a slap in the face to all the guys whose wives actually hate this stuff. Some of you are watching the show right now. Like your wife is sitting like on the other side of the glass door. You're on the porch and she's sitting there just glaring at you. And she's like, you rotten son of a bitch. And you're out there watching this show and you're like, man, I wish she would just smoke with me. She'd see how much this is enjoyable. We have date nights at Cigars Daily all yeah, the time. Yeah, Billy and his wife, Michelle, come over here for their date nights. That's absolutely true. Okay. Misinformation. What's the next one? Ken A. I was told all good cigars must be over $20 ha. each to be worth smoking. Okay. That is misinformation. Thank you. We got we, that pulled together relatively quick for a segment we didn't practice. Um, yeah. This is something Jim and I actually talk about here at the shop because, you know, Jim and I smoke cigars all day long together and we get to smoke whatever we want. And we don't smoke $20 cigars all the time. In fact, we don't smoke $12 cigars all the time. Some of our favorite cigars hit the shelf at around six, seven, eight, nine mm -hmm. bucks. And like, there's amazing stuff out there. In fact, AJ Fernandez in his catalog, you can take a look at a lineup right over here of some of AJ's best blends. Right here, represented in this picture, which by the way, uh, we'll show you lineup too so you can see that there is a super secret code. It is AJF Live 25, all AJ Fernandez cigars. You can find an extra 25% value when you learn about these. You can get more of that on Cigars Daily Plus in just a minute. But if you'll go back to that, Dustin, in this picture, the Ramon Iones is probably the most expensive cigar in this lineup. I think yeah. Ramon Iones shelves for between $12 and $14. But everything else in here is $10 or less, I'd like to say. Like over all the way on the other end, the last call Habano right here, that's like a 5 or $6 cigar. That was one of AJ Fernandez's personal blends that he just loved to smoke and said, damn it, the whole cigar smoking world should be able to take advantage of this. Over here is the New World Cameroon with the green band right here. Yep. This Yep. cigar is like a six and seven dollar cigar with an african cameroon wrapper that just hits incredible mild to medium flavor mm -hmm. there is no sense that the dollar amount you pay for a cigar is going to equal quality they're like if you if a five dollar cigar is what you feel like is reasonable to spend you're going to find some stuff that's going to blow you away and maybe even stuff that'll blow you away in in a in a fashion that a 10 or 12 or 20 dollar cigar might not do for you it's also by the way easier to enjoy a cigar when you feel like you got a, like a fair deal on it. I think that that like, if you're smoking a $20 cigar and it's good, better than most, but not $20 good, it's not going to be good at all. So I think like spending, like getting a cigar that's, that's reasonable to your price range. Like don't listen to the people that say that kind of stuff. If they knock you for smoking a $2 cigar, they don't know what they're talking about. They got a, they, they got a poor palate. We were talking about this before the show that I smoked a $200 cigar that you gave me. Yeah. And it's like in my top it. three least favorite cigars of all yes. time. Wow. He, Billy was literally slamming this cigar, talking about how garbage this $200 <laughs> cigar was without realizing that that week's guest on the show was the guy that made it. <laughs> <laughs> that was so classic. And, and like the guy, he, he had like, he was cool about it. He was super he was cool like, about Actually, it. Actually, I make that cigar. And you were like, it's just <laughs> sort of trash. It's just <laughs> sort of trash. <laughs> it's only kind of not great. It's <laughs> only kind of not great. It's only kind of garbage. I, Good I, for you, Billy. I can also attest to this. I just had the uh, foundation Sintager. Sen 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 Sanitaire. 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 Yeah, I don't speak that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had the Sanitaire and it's a 30 plus dollar stick, depending yep. on where you go. Yep. And don't get me wrong, it's a fantastic stick. It's complex, it's oily, it's great. But I don't think it was worth the money. And the cigar that knocked my socks off last year, probably the thing I smoked the most, was the El Rey de Mundo. 
a five dollar cigar a five dollar cigar and yeah. i just can't get enough of that right now absolutely like it, it i'm not saying that it's better where it's just the thing that knocked my socks off and it for a sixth of the price it just was wonderful for me that is a question that i you know in my last post in cigars we talked about that a lot like this cigar is four times more than the competition right is it four times better that's a great way to qualify the quality of cigar that you're getting if you're getting a 20 dollars cigar is it four times better than the five dollar cigar that you've been regularly smoking on so we're going to label that misinformation i've, I've got right. a question for billy yeah. yeah so billy would you prefer the cheroot over that two hundred dollar cigar that you hated all right so i I talk up shrewds a lot and I talk about, and let's be honest, there's 77 cents. A stick. <laughs> <laughs> if you're like a hundred percent truthful, I would take the shrewds over that cigar. You would it honestly, that cigar was like smoking a cotton ball. It had no flavor. It had no pro. And I don't even pick up flavor all that well. Yeah. It had no profile. It had nothing on it. Okay. So, so there you go. Busted. Any more again for and misinformation points here? So we've got three really good ones. Okay. I don't know if we have time for three really good ones. Do you want to pull these over into the after party? Uh, well, let's get two of them, and the last one we'll hit the after party. I'm actually logging in because I I want to get in while you still can. <laughs> okay. All right. Here is the first one. All right. This one is from Smoking JC. Uh, you should cut the first half inch off the tip. Yeah, That's that is literally lot. the opposite of what you want to do. <laughs> the idea with cutting... Now, this one you can say, this is not even a matter of opinion. Like the whole idea that a $20 cigar is always better than a $5 cigar, that's a matter of opinion. And for people who like want to come off as, you know, well-to-do, they can they can argue that opinion. Yeah, You know, the idea that darker lap wrappered cigars are always stronger. You could argue that as your opinion, but this one is categorically not true. When you cut your cigar, the goal is to cut off the smallest amount that you can to create draw. You're literally shaving off just the tip of the of the cap. It's just like a little piece of leaf that's draped over the top and glued on there so that you can cut it off. And I, it's got other benefits too, but I'll say this. That one is misinformation. <laughs> All right, what's the next one? Do you want to do what's going to make people really mad? Yes. Or do you want to do what's going to make people laugh? <laughs> oh, yes. laughing or mad. You know what? We should do both. Let's make them mad and then let's make them laugh. Okay. All right. This one is from Ricky Dakin. Oh. Plume was a properly aged cigar. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. well, uh, any plume lovers in this room? No, I throw all your crickets, all the plume away. Crickets. Okay. <laughs> So there is this very surfacey level idea in the world of cigars that there's this stuff called plume that grows on cigars. Some people at home right now are folding their arms and like, oh, I don't know about this guy. All of a sudden <laughs> he was ugly and funny and now he's just ugly. Uh, <laughs> there is no evidence that anyone has ever been able to produce that shows what plume is or that it exists. I've heard even, I mean, high level cigar makers, guys in the cigar industry that I respect purport this idea that, you know, plume is sugar in the leaf that rises to the top and crystallizes on the outside of the leaf, which sounds very nice. It sounds, it goes with the sort of authentic feeling you get with cigars. Like, Ooh, that would be really nice. And I used to smoke cigars thinking they had plume on them. Then there was a pseudo scientific experiment done at a, at some laboratory in Australia where they asked for examples of plume. From all around the world, people sent them, I guess, 10 cigars. And what they found was 10 different examples of mold. If something's growing on your cigars, it's not plume. And it's probably best to wipe it off. I wouldn't even smoke it if it's growing in the folds of the leaf at the foot. Uh, if it's growing on the outside of the wrapper, then you can kind of brush it off. I've smoked cigars with that stuff on it. It never killed me or made me sick or anything like that. But man, I would just say, be very careful when you hear people start talking about plume and what it is. There's just no reason to believe that maybe is that why you went bald yeah i had a lot of plume on the top of my head and i just got rid of it <laughs> oh because i smoked a because a you smoked plume, plume. i've Probably. smoked i smoked plume and i think my hair is just fine <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looks good that's not a wig the fact that yeah it's definitely not a wig all right uh all right, now, now the one we got now to good. make them laugh okay uh mn drummer says if you inhale a cigar to get the complete experience you have to inhale Oh, you have to inhale a cigar to get the complete experience and it's it's your money's worth. 
Yeah, you got to French inhale it like last week, Tim. I've never, I've never actually heard that one before. I've never either. That you have to inhale. In fact, I don't know, I don't know a single person that makes or sells or smokes cigars that I've ever met who would say that. And I'm and I'm talking about people who are fifth generation cigar makers and people who have been doing this since they were 18 years old and like this industry is their whole life. That's not no, nobody thinks you should inhale cigars for any reason. You have the story of the one guy that inhaled because his wife allowed him one cigar. Yeah, it have was, you ever met anybody else in the cigar industry that inhales? That inhales? No. no. Like other than like if like it's to the point where if I see somebody inhaling a cigar. I'm like, are you inhaling that? Like, <laughs> I'll say something about it. It's surprising to me because, I mean, it's it's different than other, you know, like cylinder smokable items. I'm talking about your gas station stuff and cigarettes and all that stuff. It's very Devil's different. Lettuce. It's very different. You don't want that also, floating around inside your If you're your inhaling it, how are you not throwing up? Right. It's exactly so people right. are chatting in that they have a lot of friends that believe in that. I, I have. That a inhaling couple, it is the only way to get that. inhaling it is the only. Here's one. Oh boy, I have several friends that believe that, one of which has asthma <laughs> from Karth Good. Onazi. Please show this episode to all of your friends who believe that. That's <laughs> yeah, the craziest don't do that, stuff. Brother, man. Don't do that. Premium cigars are about an experience. They're about relaxation. They're about flavor. They're about community. They're about a lot of things. Your lungs is one of the things they are not about. And there's, there's no there's no taste receptors in your lungs. <laughs> Maybe you don't have taste. <laughs> Billy, Billy check. But I feel like that's something that we combat all that. Like, I'll be like, hey, have you had a cigar? Oh, yeah, I tried inhaling and it was not. I'm like, don't do that. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, especially the ones that smoke the devil's lettuce, <laughs> try to inhale it from the get go. Yeah. Yep. And then yep. they're like, oh, this is actually really nice. Or yeah. Or people who wrap their devil's lettuce in like a premium cigar leaf. Like, why would you do that? Okay. Uh, now I've got, I've run over our time by several minutes here, by about 12 minutes, because I wanted to get more cigar misinformation guys. There's even a lot more out there. The one that I wanted to bring up was this idea that you can't store cigars standing up. Like we sell these acrylic jars in a brick and mortar shop and, uh, they, they literally you put your cigars in it standing up and down like this. And people are like, you can't store them like that because it'll ruin them. Which is it, which the thing you want to ask them is like, how? How does it ruin them? It's not like that. It's not like like with wine, there is this idea that if you store wine, I guess it's laying on its side like this, that it can get bottle shock and it like ruins the wine somehow. I'm not a wine snobby guy, so it's, I don't know. You dry out. You have to keep liquid on the cork or the cork dries out. OK, so storing it standing up and down is a yeah. problem. So it's standing up and down is the problem. For with wine. cigars, there's no sense that if your container's good, your humidity's good, the temperature's good you're good. You can store the cigars upside down, the diagonal, like just throw them all in there in a jumble. They'll be fine. I've Unless heard they're it's... putting like their cigars in like a small Vlasic pistol jar. A Vlasic pistol jar. A Vlasic pickle jar and it's just the Toro and they're just... Uh, like, <laughs> yeah. That's the only way the construction will get messed up from st storing your cigar. Ramming right the lid so on So I've there. heard it is if you store it up, all the oils will drop down to the foot. Which is dumb because if you store it this way, all the oils will drop down to, to the bottom of the, to leaf. the bottom. So right. it doesn't make sense. Well, and, and some people who rotate their cigars would argue that. And and like, I'll, I'll give some credence to that. Maybe if you're aging a cigar for like years, maybe there's a sense of that. I don't know. I mean, I don't even know if I would fully buy into that, but maybe there's a sense if you're aging them for a long time. And if you're aging, you want to rotate. But also like most people's collection is like, is their collection to last them, you know, 30, 60, 90 days. Most people keep like a desktop humidor or a humidor in their house. They'll have some stuff in there that's older, but most of your cigars are ones you're going to be rotating through. So no, I would say that there's no credence to that. That is misinformation. Now, before we get labeled misinformation, I want to tell you guys that this show is going to continue, but only on CigarsDailyPlus.com. What passes for real information and misinformation in our society anymore isn't entirely clear all the time, if you haven't noticed. And so we created Cigars Daily Plus as a place where we can create content and have these conversations without worrying about the judging, prying eyes of big tech watching over us. So I want to invite you to join us there for the after party where this show is going to continue just with even fewer rules than it has right now. I stumble over my words when I'm trying not to like step on a community guideline, which I would never, ever want to do. So please go to Cigars Daily Plus. Creating an account is easy and it's free. Our goal is to make the best damn cigar content online for you 
for free. So you can go there and make an account with your name, a username, email, and a password, and you're in. It's all the same great content here, except there's more content in a lot of the videos. You can find coupon codes and more. If you're not going, we're looking forward to seeing you guys for another great episode next week. Otherwise, we'll see you guys on the after party in just a second.